y'all, Scott here. I've always wanted to be a remake, being a better version of my past self, maybe in HD or 3D. I always base my decisions off of what Crest does. But that of course means sacrifices are in order. I can't just go and remake the entirety of my life in 3D without the budget going through the roof. So I have to start cutting content. Yes, a new game console. I can't wait to play the latest and greatest. Don't look at me. Every single piece of thing is people saying, man, things were better back then. World War II, f that, it's all about the classics. To achieve a greater appreciation of a medium in its entirety, it's almost required to look back at where it was years prior. But sometimes that can be an absolute nightmare. Access to older media may not be as readily available as the newer stuff, and that older stuff just may not have aged all too well. Which is why old media is sometimes reborn in a new age, retooled to be more easily accessible, remade to re-engineer that original piece of art into what it was always meant to be. Just kidding, it's for money. Remakes, remasters, re-releases, this is the best investment I've made all year. Some may say these are all products of a lack of new ideas and creativity. The sentence is over. Remaking things has been a thing ever since the inception of things, and the core concept of it is great. Let's take a movie, for example, that may have been held back due to the time in which it was made, maybe due to budget constraints or lackluster special effects. Take that old movie and improve it, like a lot of films from the silent era were remade when sound was an option. But now, remakes of films aren't necessarily done to improve a film, rather, they're just easy ways to make a quick buck. See, I recognize those three words, I should see that. Oh man, I recognize these words too, I should do this! Video games, however, generally are a bit of a different story. The act of re-releasing is more of a necessity than a cash grab mostly, taking old games and making them available in modern times. Now, this can range from taking the original game and simply making it playable on a new platform, this is the saddest type of before and after, all the way to a from the ground up reconstruction of the game, rethinking the entire thing and redesigning it with modern standards and audiences in mind. Now the core concept of the remake, remaster, re-release has changed drastically over time. The games that were once called remakes are now considered remasters, which have since been re-released and have been ported to other consoles. I've had it up to here with words. In fact, I'd argue each era of gaming had a re-release trend until all types of them just wouldn't stop happening like right now. So let's look back at re-releases throughout history so we can actually figure out which is what and what is which. Of course, one of the first examples of the re-release was taking arcade games and translating them to home consoles. Here's Pac-Man and here's somebody trying their best. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, video game consoles just weren't powerful enough to replicate arcade titles, so developers had to remake the game from scratch to work on the desired hardware. Some of these games were decent conversions. Space Invaders was pretty spot on on Atari 2600, so it was Pong, Centipede, they did the job, but then you had Donkey Kong. Nice tagline. Of course, as game consoles became more and more advanced, they could handle arcade games much more smoothly. Back in the 80s, re-releases boiled down to just putting the same arcade games on whatever hardware they could. A new console's out, well surely we can squeeze Berserk on it. The Atari 2600 version of these games were just a means to play them if you had a 2600. The same goes for most other platforms at the time. The developers knew these home console releases weren't the definitive versions, so when new hardware would come out, they would release a new version of the game for them. It was just to make these games as accessible as possible. When we reached the NES and Sega Master System, most arcade games that the Atari 2600 looked at you funny when you asked it to play actually played pretty competently here. But as home consoles gained more power, the arcades were that much further ahead of them. So here we have Strider in the arcades, and then The Horror. That's why you had to upgrade even further to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. The quality was much more in line with what you'd want out of arcade games in the home. So arcade games weren't necessarily remade from the ground up for some of these consoles. Many times, they were ports, a game made for one thing brought over to another. I consider ports to fall under the re-release banner if they released a good while after the initial launch. Sure, they may be downgraded or feature added content, but they're basically the same game. Yep, the 16-bit generation was where we started to see far more true-to-the-source material re-releases. However, it was also one of the first major times we started to get full remakes of older console games. Now, true remakes weren't really all too popular at this point in gaming. Uh, what was there to remake? Yeah, you know, with a bit more polish, that has potential. Sure, arcade games had to be remade to run on the Atari 2600, and various PC games were remade and re-released on home consoles or on PC again. But home console-wise, this was a huge step forward when it came to taking previous titles and remastering the graphics and sound and potentially even adding content to bring these classics into the modern light. Of course, one of the best examples of this is Super Mario All-Stars, a compilation of full 16-bit remakes of the four 8-bit Super Mario Brothers titles. They added the ability to save your progress, little extra details here and there were thrown in, new animations, the sprite work was completely redone to look the part of a new SNES game. These don't look like old NES titles, this looks like it 
it belongs here. Some people prefer the Mario All-Stars versions of these games compared to the originals, but I prefer the original NES games. I'm more of a purist, I say, as I wipe the snot from my nose. I love All-Stars, but the physics are just different enough to make me actually hate it. Mario All-Stars was incredibly influential, and in my opinion, set the standard for video game remakes and re-releases. The idea of compiling old games and selling them as new games? That was genius and terrifying. I own 12 copies of Mario 1. This game really did pave the way for remakes in the 16-bit era, and in general. Mega Man The Wily Wars was a remake of the first three Mega Man titles on NES for the Sega Genesis. Now, Wily Wars is a little more rough around the edges compared to Mario All-Stars, but it's still a neat little package, and they actually added an unlockable mode where you can utilize abilities from all three of the games. And there's Ninja Gaiden Trilogy on the SNES. Oh man, they're the same games. Yeah, the music was updated to be more SNES-y. But the graphics, yeah, hey, 1995, 1991 called. It's really weird for me to see games on SNES cartridges that just don't look like SNES games. Like, by f it's Space Invaders on Super Nintendo. The original game came out in 1978. Well, now it's 1994, bitches. I gotta check the calendar. Remakes and re-releases on SNES were generally remastered like Mario All-Stars, but remakes and re-releases on SNES didn't happen very frequently. They happened, no doubt, but they picked some weird ones. They remade Tetris and Dr. Mario from the NES. Why? Sure, it's two games in one, but these are remastered versions of NES games. Why not just make new versions of these games? They're puzzle games. It's like reusing bread. It's strange considering the SNES couldn't play NES games. You'd think Nintendo would capitalize on that and re-release more of their stuff, especially after how well Mario All-Stars did. But hey, I looked in the mirror. I'm not a 130-year-old Japanese company. I don't know what I'm talking about. In the background, though, the handhelds were an entirely different story. With portable gaming being a good bit behind console gaming, many developers discovered it would be pretty hard to bring their games over without huge amounts of sacrifices. But it would all be worth it due to being able to play these games on the go for the first time ever. Having to remake a game for far worse hardware, yes, that is considered a demake, and handhelds would get them all the time. Yeah, I wish I could never play Street Fighter 2 on Game Boy again, but hey, it's Street Fighter 2 on the go, maybe four more times. These early demakes for handhelds would lay the groundwork for handheld remakes to come. Uh, sometimes, if not most of the time, they would be lacking in one way or another, but they would often entice you with a few killer features. Back then, those killer features were almost strictly just portability. That was the core reason for buying these versions. But as the 3D revolution hit our screens with the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation, the the idea of re-releases became much more enticing to not only developers, but consumers as well. Like, do I really want to be seen with one of these in 1996? Who'd want to see a fetus play Nintendo? Do you really want to keep your old systems around just to play Chrono Trigger, just to play Excitebike, just to play old arcade games, when all of these games could definitely be played on your new systems? Well, these consoles were much more competent at emulating older systems without a ton of hassle, so much so that sometimes older games were just thrown into new games as bonuses. You could play the original Excitebike and Excitebike 64, the original arcade Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong 64, Galaxian was the loading screen in Ridge Racer, games that were once the hottest shit on the planet became waiting rooms. But when it came to full-blown remakes, Again, Excitebike 64, it has a 3D remake of the original Excitebike as an extra mode. Do you have a 3D remake of the original Excitebike as an extra mode? F*** you, Donkey Kong 64. I believe during this time, developers were more eager to create brand new experiences, especially with 3D being the hip new thing to do. When it came to revisiting old experiences, they preferred just cleaning them up, adding some cutscenes and loading screens to Chrono Trigger and calling it a day. Resident Evil 1 started life out as a remake of the Famicom game Sweet Home, but it obviously became its own thing. That idea, however, taking this age-old game and modernizing it with a brand new direction and perspective is exactly what the gaming industry was going to experience a generation later with, oh hey, Resident Evil again. The GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox was the golden era of all things lazy. All types of re-releases happened. There were standard re-releases, old games playable on modern platforms instead of brand new ones that might have maybe pissed people off. Remasters, old games spiced up for modern platforms with a few changes here and there that maybe probably pissed people off. And then remakes from the ground up reconstructions of games that changed so much that it it probably sort of pissed people off. They covered all bases. A game I believe to truly define what a remake could be was Resident Evil on the GameCube, a remake of Resident Evil on the PlayStation. Everything was upgraded and tweaked to make this the definitive way to experience Resident Evil 1, although it's fair to consider these two as different games based on the same overall story and structure. Basically, RE Remake is what they wanted the original to be if technical limitations weren't as much of a thing on the PlayStation. It covers the same beats but added tons of stuff and gave the overall game the dark tone they wanted but couldn't do because acting is hard. Stop it. 
Don't open that door! Similarly, Metal Gear Solid was remade on the GameCube as Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, re-engineering the title to be more in line with Metal Gear Solid 2 than the original, and it is way more over the top. Twin Snakes is some good stuff, but it's such a tonal shift from the original game that I think these two stand on their own rather than Twin Snakes straight up replacing it. But then we have Conquer Live and Reloaded on the original Xbox, one of the most love it or hate it remakes out there. See, they took this cult classic N64 title and made it gorgeous. It's insane to think this was on the original Xbox and not the Xbox 360. And while various tweaks were made to the gameplay to make this the overall better game experience, a little things were changed that make this version have way less charm. The animations are so stiff in comparison. In the original, Conker's entire face is fully animated to portray anger, sadness, happiness, you know, stuff us live people do. The remake seems to only really give him 2D eyelids to convey his emotions. Plus, in this M-rated game that is entirely focused on being crass and inappropriate, they only censored more stuff in comparison to the Nintendo 64 original. You're trying to tell me my Xbox can't say f now, me personally, I find it funnier when f***ing shit are bleeped, but it's just bizarre that while the N64 version already had some dialogue censored, the Xbox version has even more of it censored when this is supposed to be the definitive experience, and the Xbox is for people who love to say the word f***. Plus, the old multiplayer was replaced with a completely different online multiplayer mode. This is a toughie because while they tweaked various things to make the gameplay and presentation better, they even added new scenes that poked fun at this being a remake, it's obvious this wasn't just a quick cleanup job. The thing is, Conker's Bad Fur Day was beloved for the character of it all. I don't know many people who say, this game's humor is terrible, but god I love the gameplay. When you take one of the core gimmicks of the game being the fact that these cartoons swear, haha, how the story is actually very character based and is one of the biggest elements of the game, how all the characters were full of life and a unique personality and you censor more of it and make the animations worse, it's a tough decision to decide between the two. Do you want a better game or do you want the better Conquer experience? And see, that's one of my big issues with a lot of remakes and remasters in general. See, they take the original game and they try to improve upon it, but then there's those few little features they don't improve on. They either forget to, or they change things up too much, or they just remove features entirely. So that begs the question, why wasn't there Wii Remote support in Twilight Princess HD? The Wii U supports Wii Remotes. You could have had both the Wii and GameCube control schemes in one game, Nintendo. Why aren't you writing me back? But remakes weren't the only thing this generation experienced, since the Dreamcast, huh, you know, f***ing died. Sega brought over loads of their games to the remaining big three platforms with some new content added. Plus, they remade many of their classic titles in 3D via the Sega Classics Collection, alongside tons of compilation discs featuring so many classic titles, making tons of old school favorites playable in the things people were actively playing at the time. And then there was Resident Evil 2 and 3 on the GameCube. What the hell was going on here? I don't know why it took me so long to realize these are just PlayStation 1 games on GameCube discs. They didn't add anything, didn't change anything. If you played these games on the PS1, you played these games on the GameCube. I never heard anybody talk about the GameCube versions of these games, but for some reason, I always expected them to be somewhat remade along the lines of the GameCube remake. But if that were the case, I'd hear more people talk about these games that they were actually remakes, so I have no damn clue why I didn't expect these to be just straight up ports. This was somewhat unprecedented at the time, to just take an old game from the previous console and throw it on the new one with no enhancements, just another way to play these old games. If they release these two games a part of a bundle, a Resident Evil 2 and 3 collection, then it wouldn't be anything new. But while this business tactic was a bit abnormal at the time, it would later become so much more popular with generations to come. With the seventh generation, there was a huge leap forward with presentation. We got HD graphics, online play was the standard across everything. This must have meant classic games were fully remade from scratch. What the f is this? Welcome to one of the nicest infestations I've ever met. I'm not complaining, but an infestation's still an infestation. This is what I consider to be the HD remake era. Games that were consistently called remakes back then. Oh my god, Three Man 3 remade? Do you have no shame? This is just the original game in widescreen. Yeah, it's a little bit crisper, but it still looks old. Models, the textures, they don't look modern at all. Like, I'll happily take the game in widescreen, but nothing else looks all too improved. See, we had tons of classic games re-released during this era through digital shops, compilations, or HD collections, and whenever it would have HD at the end of the title, it basically meant the only thing we did was put this game in widescreen. Let's get out of here! Here's my problem with these. Yes, it was nice to have these games in a slightly more modern format on a new console with improved visuals, kinda. But when you put these games in a higher resolution and that's all you do, it kinda makes the visuals look more dated this way. See, Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, this game and the models were made for a lower resolution and thus it hides a lot of imperfections. They didn't put as much detail in some areas because the resolution would mask it. Resident Evil 4 HD on the Xbox 360, yeah, sure it's cleaner, but the fact it's now in HD, 
it's so much easier to see where this game has aged and it oddly looks older now. This is on the same console as Resident Evil 5, with them both being in HD, it's easy to see how these visuals have aged more so. I'm not saying RE4 is a bad looking game, far from it, but you can appreciate the visuals more in something like the GameCube version. Here it looks like a GameCube game running in HD, and it's harder to appreciate in this way. I like remakes when they upgrade the visuals to the point where you can't tell it's an old game. Nearly all quote unquote remakes during this era were not that. Like here, point out the old game. These remakes are more so called remasters now, which is a much better term for them, and many describe them as they may be unimpressive at first, but they're how you remember the game looking. And when you see the original, it's like night and day. Yeah, with some games, sure, but most of the time, these remasters were literally just widescreen versions. At least this made many games more readily available on modern platforms, but these remasters felt very budget. Obviously, these developers just wanted to make these games available on these consoles with slightly upgraded visuals. They didn't want to remake the entire game, so just throw together some HD collections where the game constantly swap between 4x3 and 16x9, this just looks bad! Devil May Cry HD, featured in the HD collection. Uh, listen, I understand why it flip-flops between aspect ratios. It uses pre-rendered video files alongside cutscenes that take place in-game. Uh, Devil May Cry was initially made with 4x3 in mind, so these videos are justifiably 4x3. The in-game cutscenes and gameplay, they were able to modify the code to run these in widescreen. The video files are pretty much stuck the way they are. I get it. Unless they wanted to go in and remake all these videos, they had to do it this way. But my problem with this is, when playing this game on the PlayStation 2, it's not all too noticeable what was a video playing and what was the actual in-game stuff. That was the point in making half of these things video files. When playing the HD version, it's immediately recognizable what's a video and what's not because of the aspect ratio, and at that point, I kinda wish they just kept the entire game in 4x3. It constantly changes, just don't even bother putting it in widescreen at this point. But what about in HD remasters when they take 4x3 video files and just stretch it into widescreen? What do you think, this is funny? This is dumb, it looks bad. You're actively cutting off a pretty sizable amount of the footage. It shocks me the Sonic CD remaster did this when everything else about it is so respectable when it comes to preserving the game and giving players as many options as possible. Most HD remakes on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 were done on the cheap. Both of these platforms had limited backwards compatibility, so it just made sense to barf out ways to play these old games again, and that's all these things are to me. Ways to play these old games again. They may be in widescreen now, may look a little crisper, that's about it. At least we got some of them in fat collections, making them fairly decent buys. But see, I wish I'd popped in the Ratchet and Clank collection and had a cool menu with tons of extras and behind the scenes features, you know, scratch that, I want none of that. Oh my god, thank you, Sony! The HD remasters during this generation were fine times 10. Many of them looked pretty good and it was nice to be able to play these games in HD technically. But so many of them just made me feel... empty. Like, playing Devil May Cry on the PS2 just feels more right, while playing the HD version just feels more awkward. It doesn't feel right on this console for some reason, and the fact that these were considered remakes back then bugs me. And what else bugs me is I didn't realize that most of these games use the term remaster on their boxes. I knew a contradiction sounded good right about now. Now on the Wii, uh, things were a bit different. Uh, since it didn't output in HD, re-releases took on a different style. Here's Resident Evil again. So this is a port of the remake of a game that started life as a remake. It's basically the exact same as the GameCube version, just with more control options now. At least they labeled this as part of the Resident Evil archives, which does imply this is ass old. Two and three on the GameCube, I honestly wouldn't blame you if you were surprised they weren't enhanced in any way. There was the new Play Control series by Nintendo, which took GameCube games and enhanced them in some ways, most notably with motion controls. But of course, there were demakes like Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop, a port of the Xbox 360 game. My god. Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop is best used to finish talking about the seventh generation and moving on to the current day, where remakes, remasters, and re-releases are all happening at the exact same time. We're getting pretty much every type of thing re-released now, with one thing type being very prevalent. The this. It all started in 2014 when Square Enix said, well, only 4 million people bought Tomb Raider, that's embarrassing. Less than a year later after its release on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition came out on Xbox One and PlayStation 4, taking a last gen game and sprucing it up. Just a bit. It wasn't enough to really be this huge leap forward, rather it was a slightly better looking, better running version of the exact same game, it was the exact same game. This game would start a trend on these consoles. The Xbox One and PlayStation 4 had absolutely no way of playing older games at this time, so developers took advantage of that by re-releasing Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games as definitive editions and remasters. The term remastered became a lot more widely used with video games during this generation, definitely after being used with The Last of Us. This was a great chance to make some extra cash while also giving 
giving consumers the chance to play some games they might have missed. Games from the previous generation didn't necessarily age that bad, so it just made sense to re-release them like this, but sometimes it felt like they were deliberately trying to give us not a deal. God of War 3 Remastered. All right, so guess which one's the PS3 version, guess which one's the PS4 version. They're both the PS4 version. Look at this, I don't see much of a difference. I mean, that's not a big problem, and God of War 3 was already a great looking game. I don't know what you could do to make it look that much better. But they sold this as strictly just God of War 3 for 40 bones when a fat God of War collection was released for PS3, including God of War 3. Why not release this entire package for PS4? Remaster the other games even more, and if they were trying to lure in more God of War fans on the PS4, why release 3 when the first two weren't available? But then, we also get just ports. These aren't necessarily anything to write home about. There are ways to play old games on the new consoles, no new bells and whistles, no true differences, just... They're here, but we're also getting full modern remakes, taking old games and reconstructing them from scratch to either give them fully modern graphics or to just take the game and make a new modern game out of it. I mean, Shadow of the Colossus on PS4 is pretty much still Shadow of the Colossus after Shadow of the Colossus already got remastered on PS3 after originally releasing a Shadow of the Colossus on PS2. The Crash Insane Trilogy and Spiral Reignited Trilogy are still the same old games at heart, but titles like the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, Final Fantasy 7 remake, these are new games. They may follow similar paths as the games they're remaking, but at the end of the day, the gameplay is completely different. The level designs are completely different. They are fundamentally taking the core concept of those original classics and making new games based off of them for modern audiences as well as longtime fans. So, what the hell are these things? Well, I've talked about re-releases in the past, but that was more so talking in defense of them and the definitive edition craze. What we're talking here is the core differences between remakes, remasters, and re-releases in general. Remakes, I consider to be old games reconstructed from the ground up or with enough modern changes to make it almost feel like a new game. Remasters are more so polishing up a game, taking the core of it and not doing too much to alter it. Instead, tweaking a few things, adding some stuff, making the graphics look better. It's definitely a better game now, but still the same game at heart. And re-releases are just Resident Evil 2 GameCube. So, which games are classified as which? Well, I'm glad you asked because welcome! to a safety hazard. We have a lot of remakes, remasters, and re-releases to go through here. Which ones are remakes, which ones are remasters, which ones are re-releases, which ones are gonna fall? We are really getting ahead of ourselves here. The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. This one's an easy remake. It's the first three games, fully remade, from scratch, new music, new gameplay, new physics. It's going in the remake pile. I've been looking for a use for that thing. Secret of Mana on PS4. This one is disgusting. They took this beautiful SNES game and gave it the cheapest looking 3D graphics, but I have to give it to them. They sure did remake it. I think the best way to discern what is and isn't a remake is if they literally remade the game. Resident Evil 2, 3, and the Final Fantasy 7 remake. Now, I think a lot of people would automatically go, oh yeah, for sure, these are remakes. But let me open up an entirely new category here. Remakes. Games that are fundamentally new games with the old game's name. They may share some similar characters, plot points, and locations, but the gameplay is completely different. Things have been heavily altered, elements are added and or cut. These are pretty much new games disguised as remakes, but they get the honor of being called remakes. Dead Rising, chop till you drop, we'll just open up the demake pile here. This is Dead Rising, but it was heavily downgraded to fit on the Wii. So, yes, demake. Super Mario 64 DS. Yeah, I didn't really talk about handheld remakes throughout history, and that's because most of them are pretty much the same. They had some really cool stuff, and even if they don't add anything, the fact it's now portable is enough of a selling point. However, they all have at least one thing that keeps them from greatness. Mario 64 DS adds so much to the original game on top of altering tons of it. It's still Mario 64 at the end of the day, but they changed around a few things, and it is now really lame to control with the DS. While some things had to be downgraded for this to work on the DS, it's not a demake considering I think they added more than they took away, so I think this is more so in remake territory. Silent Hill HD Collection. This is a compilation of Silent Hill 2 and 3 in HD. Good for it, but it's not good. This is a buggy, amateur-feeling remaster of these two games, but the studio who remastered them had to work with the code Konami gave them, which was unfinished. They didn't have the finalized code from the game, so they had to rebuild parts of it themselves. Does that make this a remake? 
I'll throw it in the Silent Hill HD collection pile to be safe. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD remasters. These are both the same games at heart, but with HD graphics and quality of life improvements. I will say I remember Nintendo posting a comparison video of Twilight Princess HD showing how much better the remaster looked compared to the original, and I thought the original version was the HD version for a second. I don't really care for how Twilight Princess HD looks, but that doesn't make it any less of a remaster. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, the 3DS version of Donkey Kong Country Returns. It gets rid of motion control, offers new difficulty options, it includes new levels, it's portable, and it fixes my biggest problem with the original game. It's in 3D now. But the resolution and frame rate take a hit, it doesn't look as good. I would have said it was a remaster, but it was obviously downgraded to run on the 3DS. How about this? It's a D remaster. It's enhanced in almost every way, but was downgraded to run on the system. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch remake. It's obviously very, very faithful to the original, but with its new art style, it was obviously reconstructed for the Nintendo Switch. Resident Evil Remake. See, this is close enough to the original to be considered a remake and not a remake. Resident Evil Remake. It's the same game on a new console. Resident Evil Remake. Remaster. It's the same game, but it looks better. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, Majora's Mask 3D, and Star Fox 64 3D. I'd consider these all remasters. They all play pretty damn similar to the originals, but they look a bit better and also have some quality of life improvements. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. I'd consider this a remaster. You can even swap between the original style and the new style on the fly. A Wii Sports Club, I think is a remaster. I had to remake it for Wii Motion Plus. They're the exact same games though. Silent Hill HD Collection. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on Xbox 360. This is lame. This is the mobile phone version on 360. It runs weird and a lot of the user interface still looks like it was made for a touchscreen. Now, if you want to consider this as derivative of the mobile phone version, then it's a re-release. If you want to consider this as derivative of the original release, it's a remaster. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. I think this is a remake, not a remaster. You could already play the DS game on your 3DS. Nobody was asking for this. I'm throwing this in the pointless pile. Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered on Nintendo Switch. It's not really that much better looking. They added motion controls. F*** it, re-release. You know, the line's pretty blurry between what's a remake, a remaster, and a re-release sometimes. And honestly speaking, that's pretty cool. It means game developers are doing what they want with revisiting old experiences rather than just sticking to what the true definition of a remaster is and nothing more. People shouldn't be so worked up over whether or not something is defined as a remake or a remaster or a re-release because with games like the remakes, it's kind of hard to tell what's even considered a remake anymore. While I definitely prefer when games get a full remake treatment like with Link's Awakening, I've come to respect remasters quite a bit more even if they aren't nearly as exciting. Well, I think I'm finally ready to start the 3D remake of my life now that my cost has been cut. Uh, I just want to see what my life warrants on the board. Son of a bitch!